Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is uh, preparatory ground instruction six. We're going to be discussing straight and level flight. Uh, prior to watching uh, this video, you should have reviewed your flight training manual on exercise six. Let's begin uh, with a couple definitions. First off, straight flight means that the aircraft is heading in a constant direction. Level flight is that the aircraft is at a constant altitude. This means that straight and level flight is when the aircraft is flying at a constant altitude and constant heading. If let's just say we are flying and our altitude remains constant, but we're turning, that would mean we're in level flight, but not straight flight. Okay, here we have straight and level flight. As you can see, our wings are level and we are in the cruise attitude. But here's something important for you to notice. Most of the time, at most RPM settings, straight and level flight will be in the cruise attitude. However, you could be in a gentle nose-up attitude if, let's say, you reduce the power and you're flying at a lower airspeed. Often while we're in straight and level flight, we might want to change our airspeed. And so there's a procedure involved in changing our airspeed. Let's say we want to accelerate, we're going to add power. We're going to control our pitch and yaw. And so what's going to happen is the aircraft will tend to pitch up uh, when we have more power, which means that we have to uh, apply forward control pressure. Then we're going to trim the aircraft using the trim wheel in order to eliminate any pressure that we have on the controls. If we want to decelerate, we're going to reduce power. This will cause the aircraft generally to pitch nose down. So we're going to be, have a back aft control pressure and we might have some yaw and then we're going to trim the aircraft. Let's watch a video here of the aircraft uh, in strain level flight and accelerating and decelerating. Let's increase our airspeed by first applying power. We see the RPM increase on the tachometer and note the oral sound of the engine. We increase airspeed by adding power, adjusting the attitude and trimming. When we add power, often we have to apply forward control pressure in order to maintain straight level flight. We can reduce airspeed by reducing power by using the throttle. The RPM we note decreases on the tachometer as well. You can hear the sound of the engine, the engine RPM decreasing. And now the aircraft begins to slow. To slow, slow the aircraft, reduce power, adjust the attitude and trim the aircraft. Often when we pull the power back, the nose of the aircraft will want to drop, so we have to apply back pressure on the control column, and then we have to trim that out using our trim wheel. Let's discuss some compass errors, and these were covered in your ground school, but we'll just quickly review them. Remember that the compass is hanging from a point, and the Earth's magnetic flux lines are not horizontal. They, at the poles, they're kind of more vertical. So what happens is the way the compass is constructed, the compass will dip to align with these magnetic field lines. The compass also suffers from northerly turning error. Northerly turning error, when you're in turns to or from the north, the compass will lag. On turns to and from the south, the compass will lead. The reason for this is because there are two forces at play. We have magnetic dip. We also have centripetal force in the turn. And when we add the vectors of these two forces together, this will be the result, that a compass lag in the north and a compass will lead in the south. Here's an example of northerly turning error. 
when we're in the northern hemisphere, so it turns to and from the north, when we start turning, the compass will start to lag. Often, it will actually even go in the opposite direction as shown here. We also have acceleration error. This is particularly noticeable on east and west headings. When we accelerate, the compass will turn to the north, and on deceleration, the compass turns south. So acceleration north, deceleration south, ands. The reason we have acceleration error is because it's the result of the compass dipping and it's hanging, and then you have a magnetic force. And again, when we add these uh, two vectors together, this will be the uh, result, as you can see in this diagram. Let's watch a video now uh, showing these uh, three different type of compass errors and their effects on how the compass will perform. This is the reason also why we have a heading indicator. The heading indicator does not suffer from these errors. And so we'll, as long as it's set to the compass, we'll always provide a reliable heading. Here we're going to reduce power and you'll notice the compass will swing just slightly to the south. And when we add power to accelerate, the compass will swing slightly to the north when flying on east-west heading. Let's talk about a safety principle to conclude this lesson. So collision avoidance principles, when we're VFR, we call it big sky, little airplane, see and be seen. So you will be flying in a lot of uncontrolled airspace where there is no positive control by air traffic control. And so the principle that we apply the big sky, little airplane is that the chance that you're actually going to hit another aircraft is very small. However, it is irresponsible to be see, uh, to see and be seen. So things like using lights, uh, strategically uh, can help. And when you're looking for other traffic, you're going to be constantly looking outside. It's a bad habit to get into, be flying and staring at the instruments all the time when flying VFR. So you're going to be looking outside, you're going to be dividing the sky into different segments and scanning each segment, uh, taking a look and trying to focus, looking at uh, looking for aircraft in each different segment. Let's review. Straight flight is flight at a constant heading. Level flight is at a constant altitude. To accelerate, we're going to add power, control pitch and yaw by applying forward control pressure and trimming the aircraft to neutralize any control pressure. To decelerate, we reduce the power. We control pitch and yaw, so back, uh, typically uh, back pressure, and trim the aircraft to eliminate pressure on the controls. We want to uh, have a constant lookout uh, for other traffic to avoid them. That concludes this lesson on straight and level flight. Thanks uh, for joining me, and we'll see you in our next lesson.